Hey guys, it's Steve Harris here with Muse Themes. We have a fantastic new widget ready to go and it's called the Off Canvas Menu. So what happens here is you can click on any button you create in Muse and it's going to launch this really stylish menu that comes off from the side of the page. So that's why it's called Off Canvas. This is a really common term in web design today. So the menu has a little bit of a close button here and you can include up to eight links on the menu. You can also include a custom logo as well as a title and of course it's completely customizable in terms of fonts and colors and alignment. So let's go ahead and jump into Muse and I'll show you how to build this menu. The first thing we'll do is create a new site. So I'm going to create a standard desktop site and let's just create two or three pages here. So I'll call this page about and we'll do one more called portfolio. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is jump into the master. Remember, you usually put navigation systems on your master page. So I'll go into the A master. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see the entire page. Now let's go to our library panel. And if you've downloaded and installed the latest toolbox file, right now this is 8.10.4, this is number 41, the sidebar menu. So when you click on that, you just drag it out on the page. And when you drag it out, you'll see that we actually get these three elements that appear right away. And let me just zoom in a little bit more so you can see that better. So we have these kind of two small icon elements and then this big button. And so these icons are actually representing two different components within the widget. So this top one that has the gear and the information sign is the widget controller. So this is where you're setting up things like styles. You're choosing transition effects, that sort of thing. The widget below that has this link icon is where you input the various links that you want to have in your menu. Obviously this was too big of a menu to include one widget, so that's why we've split it out like this. The other component of this is just a standard state button. So we've included a demo state button for you to use, and you'll see that if with nothing else on the page, if I go ahead and preview this in the browser, that those icons do not show up, but we do get the state button. And when we click on it, a simple menu pops out from the side. So it works right out of the box like that. Now, one thing that I do want to point out with this widget and its setup, you'll notice that there is this gap at the top and bottom of the widget. This is actually, it looks like a little bit of a bug, but it's, it's kind of a cool feature. So the widget will only expand to the size of your page in Muse. So since I'm on the master page here, let me just turn on guides so that we can see. And you'll see that we have these various guides on the page. If you've worked in Muse for a while, these are pretty common. So we have the top of page guide, the header, and then we have the footer guide, the bottom of page, and the bottom of browser. It's really common for people to just do this. So you set your top of page at the top, and then of course you'll set your footer below your, or sorry, your header here below your various header elements. And then do the same thing on the bottom. Just drag the bottom of browser up and then for bottom of page, you typically extend this down a little bit. So this is how you're seeing most users set up their sites. Now if I preview this again in the browser and click on it, you can see that it does take up the full page in this case. Okay, so let's take a look at the various options we have for this widget and how to get it all set up from, from the start. So if we open up the controller widget flyout panel here, you can see that we have quite a few options. Now you don't need to change all of these options to make this work, but there's a couple important ones for you to notice. The top we have here is menu effect. And within this dropdown, we have a whole variety of different effects. So these effects include the ability for the menu to just slide in from the left, which is similar to the demo I showed you originally. We can have something like the 3D rotate in. And if I preview this in the browser, you can see that what happens is the menu actually kind of turns in from using a three-dimensional effect. So you can go ahead and test out all of those different effects. I won't uh, demo them all in this video. For the next option we have is the menu background color. So right now this is just set to blue, but if I set this to even black, let's take a look at how it looks. So you can see now the menu is just dark black, so you can control that element. So below this, we have the menu button setup. And the important thing here is kind of this first option that says menu button format. Right now it's set to custom button using a graphic style. We also have what we call a default button. And when you click that, all of these options actually appear. And we have a text button. 
So the best way to use this widget, I would say, is by using a custom button with a graphic style. And that's actually what we've done here. So this is a state button created in Muse. Let me delete that out for a sec. And I'll go into the buttons. These are the default Muse widgets. And let me just drag a basic state button out onto the page. So without doing any styling to this button, the way that we make this work is we go over to our graphics styles panel and we create a new style based on that button type. Now we have to give this style a name. So let's call it button. Okay, once we've done that, if we open up this widget controller and we make sure that we have custom button graphic style selected, all we need to do is enter the name of that style in this box here. And when we preview this in the browser, you'll see that the default state button already launches the menu. So this is a great way for you to have complete control over your styling in Muse. Now, if you don't want to use that state button, what you can do is just select the default button here. And with that selected, I'll preview it. And you can see this is what the default button looks like. So you don't actually have to set up a custom button if you don't want. All of these style controls below are all for styling the default button if you decide to use it. So I won't go through each of these individually now, but they're all just basic hex value colors and fonts and that sort of thing. In the area below that, we have logo and menu title options. So we've included the ability for you to use a custom logo on this menu. And the way that it works first is let's enable the menu logo and I'm gonna actually disable the text. You're probably going to wanna have one or the other, the logo or the menu title text. So with our logo enabled, all we need to do is enter the logo file name. So with most of our widgets, the way that we do this is we go file and add files for upload, logo or icon underscore white dot PNG. And when I click that, you'll see that it goes into the assets panel to be uploaded with Muse. Now all we need to do is enter that exact same name in the flyout panel here and we just need to set the sizing of this icon. So you can set it to any size you want and it will distort. So this is actually a perfect square. So I'm going to set it to 100 by 100. So with all of that in place, let's go ahead and preview this. I'm going to change the background color back to blue because I find black a little bit too dark. Okay, let's see how this looks with that custom menu in. There you go. So now we have the custom logo at the top and the menu has changed back to blue. So it's looking really good. Well, let's go back to Muse here. I'm actually gonna change this back to the custom button because I like using that state button to launch it. Okay, so the rest of the options here, we have the menu item setup. So these are for actually styling the various items on that sidebar menu. So to start, we have the text color. So we could set this to, I'm gonna leave this as white and let's set the text rollover color to black. Okay, the next thing we'll do is let's set the font. I'm gonna set this to 18. Uh, that's, sorry, that was the font size. Now we have the menu item font. Now this is where you're gonna enter the font name. So I'm gonna do Montserrat. And we have the alignment. We can change it from left, center, or right. So I'm gonna choose center. And now we have the menu spacing. So this is basically padding if you have any experience with CSS. It's, it's going to space the menu out kind of on all sides. So right now it's set to 25 and I'll just show you how it looks in the browser. So it's well spaced and you can see that our labels are now centered in the panel here. But let's go ahead and adjust that spacing and make it a little bit more dramatic. Let's go up to say 40. Okay, and let's preview that in the browser again. There. So you can see that they're much, much bigger. And so you can up that spacing until you need, but I would recommend that you keep it comfortably within one page because you don't want users to have to scroll down to see the entire menu. The last option that we have on this widget is to set the close button size, and this is in pixels. So there's a reason that we actually built this in, and it's for using this widget on mobile devices. So right now it's set to 25, and if you remember from this preview in the browser, it's actually a pretty comfortable size. So let's go ahead and create a mobile layout and I'll show you why we added the ability to adjust the close button size. So let's go into the phone layout here, click OK. And what I'm gonna do is just drag a fresh copy of this widget out onto the page. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview that in the browser. 
And if we click the menu, it looks fine. But I want to show you how this looks on an iOS device. So to preview iOS devices, I use something called Xcode. And it's an app made by Apple, and it's for developing mobile apps. But if you download and launch Xcode, you can go up to this Xcode menu here and select Open Developer Tool, and there's one called iOS Simulator. If we launch that, you can see that we get a nice little screen here that's simulating an iPhone 6. So what we can do now is we can actually launch Safari on this iPhone. And I'm just going to copy and paste this link right in. And we can have a look at how this looks. There, so we have a perfect example of an iPhone screen here. And if we click on the navigation menu, you can see that this widget does work nicely on mobile. But the only problem is this close button is really small for you to tap with your finger. So what I might suggest in this case is if you're using this widget on a mobile device, let's up the close button size here to something more dramatic. You can even go, say, 60. And now if we preview this in the browser, you can see that it's much larger in the top corner. And I'll go ahead and move that into the iOS simulator as well. And now you can see that when we launch the menu, we have a much bigger close button for the user to interact with. Okay, so let's jump back to this widget and I'll show you the second component of working with it. I'm going to go back to the desktop layout. Okay, so the second component here is for actually editing and defining your links within the widget. So this one's really simple to go through. We have the link setup, so the number of items we want to have on the menu. So in this case, let's go ahead and choose four items on the menu. So for each various item, we have three settings. We have the URL, which is the link to that item. We have the label, which is the text that's going to appear on the menu. And we have the URL target, which is where we want this to open. So for the URL, we have a couple different kind of examples set up in here. If we want to link to an internal page in the site, so for example, our about page, we would use something like this, about.html. So that will allow you to go to that internal page on the site. Now, if we wanted to go to an external site like Google, we'd need to put the whole URL in. Just like that. So we can have this one say about, we'll have this say Google. And now we have the URL target, which allows you to set whether you want the link to open in the same tab or in a new tab. I'd recommend if you're going to an, use an external link that you open it in a new tab and for internal links, open it in the same tab. The last thing that I want to show you is how to link up an anchor. So if we have a page that's quite long, and let me extend this page so it's much, much longer here. Okay, and I'll move the footer down. Now let's go into one of the pages on our site and create an anchor. So if we go to the home page, let's scroll down to the bottom and the anchor button is up here on the toolbar. Let's click that and drop an anchor and let's call that anchor just like that okay so now we have an anchor on the home page here so if we go back to our widget which is on the master page of course let's set up url3 to go to an anchor and the way that we do that is we put a hash symbol or the hashtag symbol and the name of that anchor so that should work that should allow us to jump right to that anchor so now the anchor is only contained on that home page. So let's go ahead and preview this in the browser. And fingers crossed, let's make sure it all works. So let's launch the menu. We'll go to the About page. Well, it's not found because we didn't preview the whole site in the browser. Let's go to Google. So it launches Google on a third-party window. And let's go to the anchor there. So you can see that our scroll bar is now down at the bottom. And it did jump down to that anchor point. So this widget is quite powerful. And let me show you if we preview the full site in the browser, of course, then we can go to this about page. That's something important that you need to remember if you're previewing something that you've put on the master page, but you're looking at it on one page. So as you can see, the widget is quite powerful and we'll, oh, as always, continue to revise and improve on it as users encounter issues or use it on their client sites and have requests. So enjoy. We're really excited about this one. And please let us know if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks again.